in there, you bastard. Tom. Hey, Tom, how are you doing? Hey, I'm, I'm good, I'm good. Are you in the dungeon as well? Yeah, yeah, oh, I've been here a dungeon. while. Can I, can I get a drink? Oh. Oh. Cheers. So. Lucky I've got my mic on. <laughs> yeah, that was good. That was fortunate that they mic'd you up before they threw you in here. Yeah. So what movies have you been watching this year? Not so many 2018 movies, to be honest. No? Because when we just should we say like we, what we decided to do? Sure. We decided to do um, our favorite film of 2018, our least favorite film of 2018, and the film that we thought we could change one thing about. Yeah, like an honorable mention, wait, we yeah. can only change one thing. No, we can do, we can sure. do multiple things, like sure. why not? A film that you liked, but would be better if you could change. Yeah. Or terrible, but would be great if you could Yeah, change. yeah. And so we haven't told each other any of our lists no. so far. No, we don't know anything. So, what is your number one film? What is your favorite film of 2018? My number one film of 2018 is Mandy. Wasn't that cool? That that was that was amazing. So have you seen Mandy? So I haven't seen Mandy. Um, uh, I was gonna watch it with a friend of mine, and we haven't got around to watching it yet. So Mandy is to me, it's in the same sort of family as Fury Road. Okay. Like it's nothing really like Fury Road. I did enjoy Fury Road. Fury Road, is, like we've said, one it's one of those films that I think both of us were thinking when we talk about our top three films. Do we add Fury Road into that? Yeah, yeah. That's always. I feel like it should be in there because I like that film so much. I love it so much. But I felt like the energy of Fury Road came through a little bit in Mandy in a weird way. Okay, so what, is it like kind of like the, like a weird pacing for the story structure? It's, it's nothing like it in any way. Uh, the structure is totally different, the pacing is totally different, but the feeling I had coming out of it at the end was sort of similar to Fury Road, where I felt like, oh, that was an experience. Okay. Like, I just felt, like, overwhelmed by it. Ooh. And it's weird, because generally I don't like films that are, like, very slow or purposefully slow. Yeah, yeah. Like, this one, it was supposed to be, like, dreamlike. And normally with a film like that, I'm like, oh, fuck it, don't make me watch something that's purposefully boring. Make, make something happen. You know, I'm here. But for whatever reason, it, like, it hypnotised me. Oh. Like... First of all, the way that it looked. What they did was they, um, they shot it digitally okay. on like the cameras that, I think the same camera that they used on Fury Road even, Ari Alexa, just for you guys to do your homework out there. I was literally just about to say that as well. Damn, sorry, steal your thunder. It's okay, no, you, you take that one. But what they did was they grubbed it up. They like made it purposefully like dirty. So okay. they added grain, like oh, they took um, grain from 16 millimeter film and 35 millimeter film and put that on top of the film graded it in a way which was like, it was almost like they smeared colors across the screen at certain points okay. and made the grain more intense or less intense depending on what was going on. They really used grain and color to reflect what Nick Cage, who's the main character, what sort of state of mind he's in. Nicholas or if, Cage. to make it more, Nick, it, is, it is the perfect Nicolas Cage movie, right? There's, there's Vampire's Kiss, have you seen Vampire's Kiss? I haven't done. That, that is the ultimate Nick Cage movie, right? That's the one where the, me, the thing comes from is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. I do like Nick, Nick Cage, but yeah. I find I often feel, feel like I'm watching Nick Cage. That's, that's one of my favorite things about it. Though. Like <laughs> yeah. when, when Nick Cage gets to be Nick Cage, I'm just like, oh, give it just, to me, baby. Just him like going crazy. Oh! <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Just a lot of that. That's it. He's actually pretty subdued for the first half of the film. Okay, so from what, what I understand, so I don't think this is spoilers, correct me if I'm wrong, mm. he's got a partner. Mandy. Mandy, yeah. perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and then there are uh, dev devil-worshipping bikers and maybe a demon turns up and he, it involves just Nick, Nick Cage killing, killing them because they've attacked his partner or something like of. that. And I feel like I saw that, that was in the trailer or yeah. it, that's the blurb of the movie. Yeah. They're, they're, it's, it's him and his wife or girlfriend, Mandy, we don't really know. They live this secluded life in the woods. And then she's walking down the street. There's a scene in the trailer which is just totally red. 
and she's walking down and a, a van is coming towards her. In that van is a cult. It's a cult of like five people. Okay. And the cult leader's just sitting there looking out the window and he sees her and he's like mesmerized by her. And he's like, I want that girl. So they go and they summon demon bikers who became <laughs> demon bikers because they were right. on like just the most extreme LSD that some guy concocted. And they twisted into these things, which were like demons. And so you offer them a sacrifice and they'll do this thing for you. Okay. So they go and they kidnap Mandy and try and seduce her to become part of their cult. Right. Wait, did you say, tell me again what you thought the story was, just so I don't spoil what... Demon bikers, may, I, from what I understand, she dies okay, or so something. Okay, so it is a revenge film, right? And that's when the movie turns into the sort of Fury Road style thing. Right, okay. Where he, um, like, does... Some crazy stuff. Terrible things. Does he have a chainsaw? He, at one point, has a chainsaw and he has a chainsaw duel with someone. So chainsaw duel is always a classic. But it's not only a chainsaw, it's he gets a crossbow and he forges his own axe. So what are you going to do with that man? I'm going hunting. Perfect, perfect. Like, I'm just, it just, it's so good. Oh my God. Just Nick Cage turning into this, like, mythical warrior who forges his own axe to avenge the death of his girlfriend. It's like, it's Nick a, Cage, you, oh. A classic, a classic story. Yeah. So, yeah, Nick Cage, amazing. Look good. Music was fantastic. The acting was really good, like, apart from Nick Cage, who just went Nick just, Cage. Just went full Nick Cage on, up on that. Mandy was great. She, was this, she has this, like, ghostly-looking face. Ooh. Like, these big eyes. and I don't, She's got, like, blonde eyebrows or no eyebrows, and it gives her this weird... Who is she? Is she some famous? I've seen her before, but she's someone who you'd be like, oh, my God, like, she's in that movie. I didn't even... Oh, she's in, a, she's in Oblivion. And Andrea Riseborough. She's in The Death of Stalin. She's the... She's, yeah. Daughter. Yeah. She's Svetlana Stalin. I love that when you get people who can be funny and like really good at acting. Yeah, holy shit, bam, okay. And yeah, the, the director, pa Panos Cosmatos. It sounds like a ready meal I might buy in like a <laughs> fancy supermarket. Yeah, yeah. And um, it's his second film. What's his first? Beyond the Black Rainbow. Never heard of it. Never, I didn't hear about it until I saw this. And apparently it's even more trippy and weird. I, I, I want to yeah. give it a go. Nick Cage was like, yeah, I, I watched it and I couldn't sleep for a week. So that's why he, uh, <laughs> that's why he did this. So if it, if it makes Nick Cage not sleep for a week, okay, well, it's got to be I pretty disturbing. It takes a lot to disturb him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to, to get into his disturbed mind. I, I'm working on my Nick Cage impression, by the way. It's, it's not there I've yet. been enjoying it. <laughs> no, it's, that's almost Kermit. <laughs> Oh, I'm, Mandy, Mandy, whoa. Well, perfect. Is that, was that Nick Cage or Kermit? That, that, it's on the edge. It's like Kerm Cage. I like Kerm Cage. Kerm Cage. Bam. Cannot wait for that movie to come yes. out. It's him and Kermit the Frog. They team up. They got together. Yeah. A buddy cop film. They go back to the Wicker Man Island. Yes. Yeah. Even, I guess he died at the end of Wicker Man though, didn't he? Yeah. His brother. Brick Cage. Brick Cage. Goes along, teams up with... Like, you know, deadbeat frog detective. Yeah. His character in the film was Nick Cage, right? It wasn't, he wasn't, he was playing a character, he was playing Nick Cage. He was Nick playing Cage Nick Man. Cage. Yeah. Um, Brick Cage and Kermit. Brick Cage. Go and take out the Wicker Man. <laughs> I'm in. I'm, I want to see that film. Oh, God. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Shit, and like, you know, Muppets, they're pretty flammable. They so are, they're, they're totally gonna... flammable, yeah. And I'd, I'd love to see the scene with um, little, sort of like Jim Henson style, like cartoony bees. <laughs> on, on wires, flying around yes. and, and uh, attacking someone. Yeah. Maybe they can sing. Holy shit! As they do that. What What would the What would the B song? What would the B theme wow. be from a Muppet? A Muppet's Wicker Man. Um, S Sting. Sting. They'll be yeah. Sting will sing the song. <laughs> Perfect. I've got no idea. No, um, no. You just really set me up for a fall there. It could have been a win. Could have been it a was, win. You, you didn't, could have you been. Didn't get you know the pins yeah. were there, but got a ball all the way. So. Bam, Mandy, that's your film of 2018. So, Tom. So, Tom. What is your favourite film of the year, um, 2018? Okay, so this, 
uh, I had to have like a bit of a think about my favourite film. A bit of a soul search. <sighs> soul searching. And, uh, but I, went, I opened up this list of films in, from 2018 and straight away I was like, that would probably be my favourite and I couldn't find any others that I liked more than it. So it became my favourite by default. Okay. And that was A Quiet Place. I haven't seen A Quiet Place yet. Well, perfect. Tell me about it. We can both have recommended a new film to each other. Yeah. Um, also, when, after watching this film, I just want to say there were a lot of plot holes. Okay. And afterwards, I sat, sat having a chat with a friend about it, and the plot holes became more and more apparent <laughs> as we spoke about it. Okay. But while watching the film, none of them bothered me. Okay, that's cool. And so that's why I am ignoring the plot holes, but they were numerous. Okay. And um, so I just really enjoyed it. Like, I'm a big fan of horror films. Mm -hmm. I like to watch a lot of horror movies. Me and you, we talk about a lot of horror films. And um, the same with Simon. It's one of the main things that I like to chat about. And yeah, it just felt like it was very refreshing. It felt very different. Almost all of the film is silent as well. Like, there's basically no music throughout the movie. Really? Because the bad guys, there's monsters. And it kind of establishes through, like, newspaper clippings that... There are these creatures, and if you make noise, they come and kill you. So is it, is it the kind of monster that you, like, do you see it? Or are they so like an invisible thing? you'll things? see it, but the first few times of seeing it, like, some noise will be made, and literally it will, like, bam, like... You barely see it. You, you, know. you see it for, like, a split second, right, okay. and, like, whoever made the noise just disappears. Oh my God. Like, just gets, like, torn off into the woods, and you're like, ooh, Jesus, yeah. that's pretty savage. I like the ingenuity for um, them living their life, because it's a family, there's uh, John Krasinski, mm -hmm. uh, the guy from the American office, yeah. and there is the lady who was in Emily Live, Blunt. Die, Repeat, no, the uh, Edge of Tomorrow, Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah. and they're both really cool in it, and there's some kids who I think they were clear favourites in the kids because one has a lot of screen time, okay. one has very little screen time, and one yeah. has basically no screen oh, time. Oh, God, right, okay. And I, so I think, you know... He couldn't stay quiet. That's yeah, why, yeah, well, yeah. you know, you've got to watch it. Yeah. But yeah, so I felt like the... I had really good pacing. It kind of broke a couple of sort of horror tropes that you're sort of used to, and it wasn't just jump scary. And I was curious, because it's John Krasinski... I think he wrote and directed it as well. Yeah, and is it, starred like, in it. Yeah, is it his first film as I've well? I've heard that it is. So how was it for like a first time film? Honestly, really good. Really yeah. like refreshing, really nice. Uh, yeah, definitely like the moment I finished watching it, I was just like, bam, that was amazing. Also, the end of the film is fantastic. Okay. It's so good. That's important. Like I think a lot, of, a lot of films just don't, you need to have a good ending because it just taints the rest of what you just watched if it's Exactly, bad. yeah. If you get like a bad ending, then suddenly yeah. all, all the other things that you saw, uh, you, you forget about the good moments and you're like, Ugh. Yeah. Ugh. Exactly. Come out and you're sick. And the, the creature design, because I'm guessing at some point you see more and more yeah. as it goes along. That, was that okay? Was it, did it throw you out of it? Was it? No, it was pretty good. Like maybe one or two shots of it, you're like, that's a big CGI monster. Yeah. He looked pretty CGI, right. um, but was pretty cool. Um, it felt very reminiscent in style of the, the Demi-Gorgon from Stranger Things. Okay. It doesn't look like that thing, but right. a little bit of the same sort of feel, that aesthetic. Yeah, and okay. I liked it. I thought it was cool. Um, there's lots of weird like shots where it super zooms into like, I don't know, it's ears or it's fucking face or something. Oh, and you see like... <laughs> um, what, worms? No, it's like just mucusy meat. Oh my God, why, um, why do you, what? You see mucusy meat in his ears? Because it's like all about, because it hears really well. Oh, the creature? Yeah. I, th I thought you were like, it goes into John Krasinski's ear. No, and it's just no, like, no, no, the yeah, creature's yeah. ears. Like right. you, there's these shots of that. And I was like, oh, that's kind of fun when it yeah. like, there's a fucking noise like a mile away, and it's just uh, like, and, <laughs> and uh, that's how they can hear so well. Oh man! Um, one of the the crowning moments of glory was this is like the tiniest little spoiler, but not massive spoiler. Okay, I'm ready. 
there's a scene, there's like a fucking, like a wooden staircase down into the basement and like, I don't know, someone's going down into that and um, they've got a blanket or something, I don't know. Uh, and it pulls like this nail, like, like vertically up onto the, the stairs. Mm. And then, I don't know, I think they like walk upstairs and it's like bam, 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 and just miss the nail. But then later on, a moment of high tension. Ah. But they, they fucking step on that nail so quickly because I thought they were going to final destination it and constantly tease, oh you God. know, oh, the nail, like it's or, still there. Or come along to it. But you can't even make that noise because they'll, they'll fucking really? get you. They're that sensitive. They're really, really listening. <laughs> so, what was your least favourite film that you saw of 2018? My least favourite film was Mute. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what it is to make your dreams come true, Leo? I've seen you working downstairs. You're a good man. Should not punch the fucking customers. I feel so bad. Like I've met Duncan Jones, not to brag. Ooh. Ooh. Now we did we did the the Warcraft video for the main channel where we went to LA and, and filmed with Duncan Jones and the, the stars of Warcraft. And he was super sweet guy, super nice. And I really liked Moon, and I liked Source Code as well. His first two films. Yeah, Moon, fantastic. Yep. Source Code. Pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, didn't like Warcraft that much. I still haven't even seen it. Well, I, I, I feel like I can't judge Warcraft fairly because we saw it on that trip and we, they'd flown us. We got up early to go on the plane to go to LA. Oh, yeah. We landed. I'd been awake for like 24 hours and then we immediately got on a bus, went to a cinema and watched Warcraft. Oof. So I've been awake, we're awake for like 26 hours trying to watch this film with all the names and the places and the orcs and the goblins and do 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 Yeah. And I was like, man, like kept falling asleep. So I didn't feel like it was fair for me to judge, but I didn't like it. Yeah. Well, I don't think many people did. Uh, cut yeah. to, you know, fucking Rotten Tomatoes yeah. score of that. Oh no. But I was really looking forward to Mute because for the longest time, I think he even wrote that maybe even before Moon. Really? Like it was, because they're all part of the same universe, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, so there's the little cameo appearance of Sam Rockwell in Mute where it's spoilers for it's, the clones uh, in yeah. the court case. Yes, yeah, so we wrote it around the same time and for maybe 10 years he's been trying to make it. So it's like, oh my God, this is like his, his passion project that yeah, he really yeah. wants to make. Um, and Netflix gave him the money to do it. And so Netflix are famously, they let directors or writers or whatever just do whatever they want. Just make, make a fucking film. Yeah. So I was like, this is going to be fucking, this is going to be amazing. Um, and it wasn't. Man, Neo Berlin sounded amazing. Yeah. Uh, the Blade Runner-esque, gritty kind of, almost like a Hubble detective story kind of thing. Yeah, like the, the description that I read for it, because I was just sat, um, I really wanted to watch a film. I was just in a mood to like, I want to watch a movie. Yeah. I was making some food and I was like, I want to stick a movie on while I eat, eat some food. And I was flicking through and it was like, saw on Netflix that there was, oh, this film called Mute. And it was just like, bam, like a, a mute guy in Neo Berlin. He tr has to track down his missing girlfriend and confront the seedy underground of the future Germans. And yeah. it was like, this sounds amazing. Um, I want to watch it and, mm -hmm. well, continue. Well, it, okay, so yeah, Mute is about a mute guy. Yeah. One problem I had was the main character was mute. That he couldn't talk to anyone. And it, I think what that meant was all the other actors almost end up talking to him the way that you talk to a child. Yeah. Oh, is this what you want? Oh, oh yes, I love you. <laughs> like looking at him like this, because all he can do is nod and smile and write things down. Yeah. And the other actors sort of have to be like a bit more animated. Yeah, a bit more giving in the... Famously, acting is reacting. 
Oh, oh. That's a little acting tip for you Holy budding shit, actors bam, out there. so budding actors. Yeah. There's less than one. But if he's mute, what have you got to react to? Like, you can't, the, the thing is you're supposed to like listen as you're acting and like just take it in and bounce it back. Whereas these people are just like talking, like talking at a blank. I'm sure he's expressing himself and stuff, but I just basically, what I'm trying to say is I didn't buy any of the relationships as being realistic, like be, being real. No, not, a, not at all. Like there's a part where he's talking to his girlfriend and she's like, oh, I've got, I've got a secret. I've got something I have to like, I have to tell you, but you're going to hate it. Like I can't, I don't think I can tell you. And he's just like, and she's like, okay, right. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> and you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Surely you take a bit of like, yeah. Look, it's fine. Just tell me something. Like, yeah, you have to be very like on it to be having maintaining a relationship with that that meat person. Oh my god! Yeah, and especially getting through these like hard secrets when she's got this mysterious past. I love you. I love you so much. I always will. But you don't know me. It didn't feel like a real. It didn't feel like a relationship. Like he'd never even been to her house. I don't yeah. Think. Like later on, he has to. He figures out uh, her address and then goes to the house and he has to oh, yeah, address. Like how shit. in love are they if he's willing to risk his life to save her? And he's I just don't like, know. He's, he's like, like a basically knows. simple Amish boy, the growing up in future Berlin and dating a girl who's like a prostitute, but not a prostitute. Wait, it, look, it's a, gang. it's a tale as old as time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just a classic love story. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, I super get what you mean. I found my biggest problem about the main bit of the storyline was, because it's what, Alexander Skarsgård. Yeah. Which normally, I think he's, he's great. Yeah, he's good, yeah. Um, and he, he bimbled around really nicely. He did, look, so a lot of the characters, in it, they will call him things like retard. Mm. And I think he played the part of someone who was, you know, mentally disabled quite well. I don't think that was his character. Yeah, no. But the way he sort of like gormlessly just walks yeah. from scene to scene. Uh, and suddenly becomes violent. Just like a super badass. Yeah. yeah. Like sure, he's a, he's a big guy. Yeah. And you could like early on when they're like tussling, like there's the British guys who I fucking loved. Yeah, they were, yeah, yeah. They were such assholes. This film had some high quality assholes in it. Well, there's like a few characters that actually had some like life to it. Like those two British guys, Paul they, Rudd. Yeah, and... they were good. Paul Rudd stole the show for me. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. thought he was fantastic. I really, really liked Paul Rudd's character. Although I did wonder how in every scene he goes through, he is basically the biggest fucking asshole you could be. Yeah. He walks into, the, like there's a situation, he's like, how can I be a massive dick right now? Yeah. How can I be the most dick I can be? I'm gonna do that. And it just always seems to work out. Hold on just a second. Lady, why don't you stare at your fucking tea? Because the next time you give me that stink eye, I'm gonna take that cup and ram it so far up your snatch, it'll look like you grew a third ear. That way. Jesus. People are so fucking rude. And like, like man, like towards the, I guess it's a bit of a spoiler, but towards the end, we just gonna. I don't care it. about spoiling our least favorite films. <laughs> there's, there's, um, he, his sort of best friend is, what's his name? Just, intro, just not Justin Trudeau. The uh, Prime Minister Theroux. of Canada is Paul Rudd's best Th friend. Through. Justin Theroux, Theroux, Theroux. And um, there's a moment where he finds out Justin throws a paedophile. So. That was a moment, like, because there's a scene earlier where he's like, because he works and he gives bionic legs to kids. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or bionic shit to people. Yeah. And it's future Tokyo. Sure. Uh, Berlin, whatever. And there's the shot and there's like the little girl and he's like, cool, yeah, do, b put on the bionic leg, go on the treadmill. I need to like film it for stuff. And like the mum's there and you're like, yeah, this seems like, pretty normal but I remember like sitting there and he's like you can like really fucking like see this kid's like little pants covered ass like yeah I feel a bit uncomfortable 
but I didn't really think that he was a paedophile at that right. stage. I just felt really uncomfortable about like, okay. this is a really weird shot. Because that's what I thought when she first came in and I was like, her like patient dress blew open a little bit and it's like, ooh, should I, that's, should we see this? Is that, should that be cut from the is, is this like Duncan Jones just, yeah. you know, is this his like putting feet stuff into oh God, his let's, movie? Yeah, maybe not accuse him of anything <laughs> on camera. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that because no, it's, it's not. Clearly it turns out. Story, yeah. Uh, yeah, he's a, a paedophile. Yeah. He's not like a, Duncan Jones. No, no. Just to clarify, the character in the film is a is like a paedophile. Can we bring up like not a paedophile? A big stamp on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> just his not face. A <laughs> not a paedophile. With the, the O in not can be his face. Perfect. Yeah. So he gets really angry at him for being a paedophile. He's like, "You're never going to do this again." And then it's something like the next scene. He's like. I'm gonna give you my house. I wanna give you the house. Okay, it's not the house, man, it's yours. And he's really nice to him. And he's like, you're my best friend. And then he goes out into the hallway, into the mall area, and he's attacked by a security guard. Because he's stealing nuts, and then he just gets he's like a knife out. He's going to stab people. And does he hit Justin? Maybe, he's, yeah. trying to, he's telling him to like calm down, and he like slaps him. But he slaps him, and then that's enough to make Justin through to tell Mute that this is where he'll be. But he's just, he's just hand over his house. He's like, I love you, I love you. He gets a, a, a hit and now he's totally against him. So he turns him in. And then Alexander Skarsgård comes and kills him, essentially stabs him in the neck. Justin through finds him and he's still alive. This was one of the most uncomfortable deaths I've seen in a film in a long time. You mean as in like, in a good way, like it was too, it was intense or like... I don't know, I just, I don't know what, what to feel about it. Cause like, uh, Paul Rudd's got a young daughter mm. and he's already warned, you know, his Justin through character, like, you stay away from my daughter. Yeah. He's like gone back home. He locks his daughter upstairs. He goes down, mm. uh, Alexander Skarsgård's in the basement cause he's found like the dead girl. They have a fight. And then Paul Rudd is left with the knife through his neck and he can't move. Yeah. And then when Justin Thoreau comes down and he's like, oh, hey buddy, maybe you should have been a little nicer to me. Yeah, I don't think I could take you to the hospital. They're gonna ask questions. And yeah. then does he like reach into his pocket? He takes like the key to the daughter's bedroom out. Yeah. You should have been nicer to me, Bill. I wanna give you the house. It turns like there's like a monitor on the wall yeah. showing like, the daughter playing yeah. in the bedroom and he like slowly walks upstairs, goes into the bedroom and it just keeps coming back to Paul Rudd lying there, Go. knife and just like gurgling, <laughs> like looking at his paedophile friend pick up and take his daughter and I was like, yeah. this is so fucked. It's so dark and it's like the Justin Thoreau's character, he knows this is like, the one, the, like the worst way that Paul Rudd could die. Yeah. So he's torturing him in the best, most effective way that he knows how to make the last moments of his life hell, and then decides to go and kick Mute in the face, give him a voice box so that he can apologize for killing his friend. And I'm like, you, you just did the worst thing you possibly could to him. Why are you so obsessed with getting an apology? Like, yeah, uh, it got very messy. Um, and part of me was also glad of that scene for the, the payoff, but also the Chekhov's gunning of, turns out Mute, really, really good at holding his breath. Yeah. <laughs> Constantly throughout the film, there's these scenes about him like, takes a really deep breath, and then like downs water, or like goes under the swimming pool, or... See, I thought that was, because we haven't talked about it, but at the very beginning, he gets sliced in the neck by a motorboat, a speedboat. Yeah. And that's what makes him mute. Oh, right? was it a speedboat? I think so. He had these like gashes on his yeah. neck. And I was like, are there fish men? Is there, <laughs> is there sea monsters? Like, I don't know, really? it's a bit futuristic. Okay. He just, it looked a bit like animalistic. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It left my mind within right. a few minutes, but it was just was like, ooh. Right. Well, to me, I, I don't know. Sea monsters. Me, <laughs> <laughs> to me, it was, yeah, he got into the rotor blades of the, of the engine somehow. And because he's Amish, they can't fix it because they don't do surgery. But if they're Amish, why do they have a uh, why do they have a speedboat? Why do they have a speedboat? Why does he use electricity now but not get his voice fixed? I think that they got this sort of like nineteen eighties level of Amish 
no but, tech past then because he's got oh, like see, record right. players and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And like wallpaper that's old. Yeah. That's, that's what Amish are into, right? Just old yeah, wallpaper. Yeah, yeah. Like, and he's got like an alarm clock and stuff. Yeah. Like he's allowed some tech, but not all the tech. I thought the point of being Amish though was you stay in the Amish community. Otherwise you're not, otherwise you're like cast out. It's, it's Neo Berlin, man. This is another problem. Anyway. <laughs> you're going to give me some uh, trouble, big boy? Or are you going to channel that famous Amish serenity? <laughs> There's also one thing that we haven't really mentioned which I thought was really bad. At first I was like, this is a bit highbrow, pretentious. And then afterwards, I thought this is terrible filmmaking, where every now and again in the film, he'll see something. Mm. And then it'll show like a little 90 second flashback, mm. where it just shows how this thing came to be. But the way the film makes it look is like he's not worked this out, but now knows this information. But it's like, are you showing the audience this information? Yeah. How this person got into this situation? That's how or... it's revealed that Paul Rudd had a relationship with the girl. Yeah. And it might have said it, but looking back, even during the film, I was like, wait, how does, does the mute guy actually know yeah. that, that happened? Does or how he know did he that? find that or out? Or do we know this? Like, yeah. who knows what in this story now? Because showing these weird yeah. filler scenes, but then the plot keeps moving forward now with that new bit of information yeah. and I was like at first I was like oh I'm not sure if I'm really getting this yeah. this is very artsy yeah. and by the end was like that was such bad storytelling that was so awfully it, it was executed. almost like just realised towards the end oh fuck we don't have this this doesn't make sense oh my we God. need to slot something there in there are these huge portions that yeah. how how do we get to this stage um, yeah so that's, that was it the, the, it was really that I just didn't believe any of the characters from the very beginning so I just couldn't couldn't get into it at any any point who the hell are you? the Dominic Monaghan sex robot scene okay that was the <laughs> one exception yeah. he was the greatest part of that film he by was far good. Yeah. because just him with the sex robots that's none of your business being like a little bit scared yeah having, getting beaten up a bit and then yeah. just being like you can come back anytime oh my god <laughs> That was really fucking hot. Yeah. What he's got? <laughs> the fuckatron Those robots. Those fucking robots. Like, who would stick their dick in the mouth of that robot? Because its head is just like whoa. And well, also spinning the, around. The cock on that other robot was <laughs> enormous and had gigantic spikes coming out. Like it was. And was going off at all different angles. Like that, that would shred that, you apart. That was my favourite scene by far. And he I was just an loved interesting it. And him character. just dressed as like a geisha. Yeah. Just yeah. Even though he's on his own, just in his house, he's yeah. just go shoot, yeah. Because I was thinking, like, man, so often, I, I kind of, like, I go home and I sit at my computer, or I, like, watch, watch TV, or, I don't know, not really do that much. Going to the effort of setting up all these fucking sex robots for, like, surely you're going to have to take them all down. Yeah. He's, like, like an... sitting there watching Sam Rockwell on the TV, he's like, I want to dress as a geisha, why not? Yeah, I want to be a geisha and have the fuckatron robots. It's going to take me two hours to get yeah. ready. And then what, I get, to, I get to fuck around for like a couple of hours and, then and then I need gonna, to take it all and down I'm gonna cook again. some spaghetti bolognese. I was just like, man, you know, I feel like I should not be having gigantic sex robots, but I should, I should be doing more with my should time. Be more productive. And that inspired me. Right, that, yeah, that gave you a, a new lease on life. Yeah. Come on. The fuckatrons. Fuckatrons. Really made me think, let's do, let's, let me do some stuff <laughs> with my life. I need to get my act together. <laughs> yeah. Why don't I have two fucking robots in my bed right now? <laughs> exactly. Why the hell can't he talk? He doesn't need words. So, my least favourite film of 2018 uh, was the movie Ghost Stories. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Professor Philip Goodman. I'm here today to share three apparently supernatural incidents with you, all of which seem deeply troubling. Hello? Is anyone there? Oh, I didn't see that either. So tell um, me about it. A few months ago, maybe like two months ago, three months ago, me and Simon tried doing something similar to this. We tried sitting yeah. down and talking about movies because it's something the three of us have been talking mm. about doing for a long time. And yeah. we tried doing it. 
And I don't think we'd ever put it out because it turned out both of us just hated this film. We were both really excited to watch Ghost Stories. The cast looked amazing. The sort of premise, it's... Well, yeah, it's Martin Freeman, right? And yeah. Is it um, multiple little stories? So it's stories? three short stories that all build up to tell like an overarching storyline. Okay. It's a, about a skeptic in sort of like ghosts and stuff who is in like sort of working as a bit of an investigator for three people that have their own ghostly stories oh, okay. to slowly persuade him that the supernatural is maybe real. That sounds cool. And I was like, that sounds great. Uh, Cause it's got like Paul Whitehouse is in it. Uh, Martin Freeman. Yeah. Uh, some other people looked really good. The trailer looked great mm -hmm. and was really excited. And then watched it and I fucking hated it. Uh. Uh, it had some really, really good moments. And it starts out and there's some really spooky shit that isn't jump scare yeah. stuff. Like he meets um, Paul Whitehouse and there's some, I don't know, like Paul Whitehouse is telling the story of all right, so when I was doing my spooky stuff, that's my best Paul Whitehouse yeah, impression. Yeah, that was good. And he's working as like this sort of like security guard. And he like, I don't know, something, something goes on and he has to like go off. And just like stuff in his office has moved. And this kind of like keeps happening. And like he's got like this like coffee cup that just kind of keeps moving to like different spots. And it's shot and it's so fucking creepy. But then... Within a few minutes, he's now down in the basement of an ex-mental asylum and there's a, a mannequin room with mannequins covered in sheets and I'm like, ugh, mannequin mm. room. That's, right. a, that's a, I've seen that before. It's been done. Yeah. Uh, also, there are things happening in these stories that he's telling the main character mm -hmm. that he could never have known was happening. Ah. Like a camera shot of like, a spooky monster like moving in front of the the camera as he's walking down some stairs oh stuff that he, he didn't he literally didn't see yeah Just and you're like oh right. and then the final part is that because each of these characters is telling the story to the main character mm. you know there's no peril you know yeah. oh it might get spooky but there's nothing they're gonna be fine so, yeah you know they always get out of these situations yeah, yeah, yeah. even though they set them up to have such peril and Fear and stuff. Yeah. And so the, the short stories were individually had some really good moments. They weren't all fantastic. Martin Freeman fucking stole the show. He's great, like in everything that he does, Martin Freeman, I think. Just really, like, I was blown away by how good he was. And his story kind of ended up being the most shocking okay. of all of them. Like, and he, his is like the third one. And it just goes really, really well. And I was like, okay, there's bits. I'm not loving everything, but there's some really cool scenes here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, ignoring some of the problems of the structure of these stories, how they're being told to the character and how it's shot, right. which was bugging me. And then, I don't know, do you want like a bit of a spoiler for the end? I, do, I don't mind, yeah, we spoiler alert this. Uh, and so the, the main guy, stuff starts going weird. So I'd almost say like, there's like the three short stories and then there's like his story at the end, which kind of is like wrapping up all of these things together, all of the information he's gotten. Okay. And there's been all of these hints throughout. There's these constant references to like, in each of the short stories, there'll be either like a child in like a yellow dress. There's like a doll in a yellow dress in another scene. Mm. You keep seeing these numbers all over the place, like on doors, on- What, in the stories that people In each of the stories that right, are being okay. told. And, then the movie ends and um, it's all a dream. No, you can't do that. It's just all a dream. Uh, it turns out the main character, he tried to commit suicide yeah. and is uh, in like passing into and out of a coma constantly. So he dreamt that people were telling him stories. And so like Paul Whitehouse, he's actually the janitor that comes in and he cleans. No, you can't do that. And Oh, in the scene where he's working as like the night guard and he's listening to the radio, well, yeah. the janitor, he's got a radio and that's the radio that was playing. Oh, no. And the other people, like little lines that they say, 
yeah, they're just things like one of the other characters, the Doctor. They wished uh, they it. It was, it was just... And it was all a dream. I can't watch it now. There is a part where, and something else that really upset me, where there's a lot of talk about someone having a demon baby that yeah. was like mutated and disgusting. And they're, they're carrying it. Yeah. And you can see like some kind of like fucked up arm yeah. coming out at one stage. And you never actually get to see the demon baby. Oh, come on. But like people that do see it like are petrified. And I, I really wanted demon baby. <laughs> and I didn't get Demon Baby. I'm just imagining the baby from Brain Dead. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, something like that, but just even more even goofy. Creepier. So, yeah, I was a bit on the fence about the film. Some parts I fucking loved, but it's all a dream. Just a prime example of how an ending can just destroy yeah. the entire yeah, yeah. thing you've just watched. It was watched. all a dream, uh, and I felt so fucking robbed by that ending. I don't know how anyone can think that's a, like fine to do anymore. That's like the joke about bad endings yeah, is it's all a dream. But Nope, they, they went for it. There's no place like home. You just had a bad dream. We're on to our final, final category. Mm -hmm. I've heard the jailer's coming back soon, so we need to wrap this up. Uh, uh, not again. Uh, so what... What film did you see this year you enjoyed, but there was something you wanted to improve about it to make it, make it better? Hereditary. <laughs> it's heartening to see so many strange new faces here today. I know my mom would be very touched and probably a little suspicious. My mother was a very secretive and private woman. I've got to say I loved it. Really, really yeah. liked it. Yeah, I think the thing is, I love, I did love it as well. There was ninety percent of it where I was like, <laughs> "This is going to be my favorite film of the year," which, to be honest, like I should be able to get over this one thing if if I thought it was that good. I fully agree with. The, I already know the part yeah. that's coming. So for me, it was it was super intense. It was great. I was into it all the way through, and right before the thing happened that. I hated was one of the most intense points of it where she's in uh, spoilers any kind of with the kind of spoiler the 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 boy wakes up and his mother is in the corner on the roof and you can barely see her so it takes you a minute to notice her and when you notice her you're like oh god and that's my favorite thing you just pick something out in the corner yeah, of the screen yeah, that you just isn't the focus and I was like this is so intense oh my god and then it cuts to a close up of the boy and then in the background his mother is like jogging sideways through the air. And I just went, oh, why? Don't, no. The crouching tiger, hidden dragon it. And, and she was wiring all over the place. She wire around. Yeah. <laughs> across the room, just really gently oh. like And then he goes running. downstairs and she's up on the roof, but it's not like in any way possible unless you're stuck to the roof somehow. Yeah. She's not balancing on anything. She's like just stuck like Spider-Man to the roof. It, that is exactly the way that I saw it because it's got that real like Spider-Man yeah. sort of like, okay, you're not flying. No. You're spider man -ing. You've yeah. got spidey sticky hands. And then she's suction cupped onto the attic door, banging her head on the door. Okay, I actually liked that moment. Oh, I didn't. I thought when um, she chases him through the house, she's gone yeah. full demonic possession. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he like, oh, he runs, he opens the thing, he just gets upstairs. And she's already been flying around by this stage yeah. on the walls. And I liked that she's just like on the ceiling, on the underside of the attic door, just like slamming her head into it. And just him upstairs like, I love, fuck! I love the like, like intensity of it. But it, the, the way that I would change it is just take out the flying bit. Like if she had just been standing in the corner of his room. Even, actually, that being said, I didn't care when she was up on the roof. I was like, oh, she's got one foot on the chest of drawers or something and she's like, yeah, up in yeah. and she's hiding. Fine. And then he goes downstairs and she follows him or something creepy. Yeah. That would have creeped me out. And then instead of um, when he's in the attic, her banging her head on the attic, because what I got from the head on the attic was, oh my God, this demon is intense. It doesn't, it doesn't care about this woman's body or anything. Yeah, it's just throwing yeah. around. So I was like, what if it was just like scratching on the attic roof until like her fingernails came off? Yeah. And just like tore away her flare, you know, just like yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, no, so I think 
that would work because the film is by this stage is already established it's happy to show some pretty yeah. horrific imagery. And then she ends up in the in the attic and she's floating in the air sawing her own head off. I loved her sawing her own head off. Really? I thought that was genuinely fucking chilling. Oh, I loved the idea of it, but it was the hard cut to a close up and she was just like it just it just didn't 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 get to me didn't scare me. But in, on paper that sounds like someone sawing their own head off. Yeah, is with because she's got like sort of I don't know like like a cheese, like a cheese cutter, wire thing, like yeah. just like ugh. Maybe it's that she's floating in the air and it took me a second. I was like, oh, she's hanging herself, and I was like, oh no, she's rubbing something. Yeah, and then yeah. It cuts it's in and she's cutting her head off. Instantly obvious what's happening. But for but. me, it would have been. And then once he goes out of the window, and um, he is he's fully possessed. The kid. The, uh, doesn't the mother's body float up to the treehouse again? That shot was... Because she's just, like, dangling. Yeah. And just, like, whoop, yeah. like, up into the treehouse. And I was a bit on the fence, because I was like, one part of me is like, that's fucking creepy. Mm. This, like, headless body, like, floating yeah. along. Like, mm. I like that imagery. But for me, it would have been... Let's, there was some people in the, in the attic with us, two naked people. Let's say they're dragging the headless body along to the treehouse with her. That would have creeped me out more. Yeah. Um, yeah, like the big chubby naked guy and some old naked lady. You're like, ooh. Just dragging a headless, headless corpse around. Jeez. Um, none of that felt established beforehand. It felt like suddenly this was a different movie and well, I was taken out of it. Because everything so much earlier had been very, very slow and tension-based and... And there are like fantastical things like demon possession and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, like if suddenly, yeah, they were like, okay, right, we've, we've shaken the knob on how crazy this is going yeah. to be. Oh, sometimes we'll go up to a five, yeah. okay, back to one. Oh, a four, okay, back to one. Someone, I don't know, the intern accidentally <laughs> went, to, went to 10 yeah. and the knob came off and they're like, oh shit. Well, I guess the last 10 minutes, we're just gonna leave it on. Yeah. Top tier fucking madness. That shit insane. Because up until that point, you, it, what I like is when it's you, you could think maybe it's in their head and they're doing it to themselves or yeah. like yeah, yeah, exactly. The whole way through, it could have been her doing doing all of it. Like she could have dug up her mother's body and put it in the attic or like yeah, that she was actually mad. A bit of me was kind of hoping yeah, that was sort of how it was going to go. Yeah. Um, but I thought, uh, after this, I thought of The Witch. Okay. Which is another similar, you know, it's one of these newer horror films that people are saying is like yeah. um, sort of arty horror. Um, and that end, again, spoiling, that ends with a floaty thing. You've seen it, haven't you? Yeah. So, I wasn't as big a fan of the floaty thing in The Witch, whereas I... I did kind of like it in Hereditary. See, I was the yeah exact opposite because for me in The Witch, the whole thing is about the whole way through. It's about the family tearing itself apart. Yeah, and then it gets to the very end. All the family are dead, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. All the family are dead, and it's just her. And now she's alone, and the devil comes along and st strokes her shoulders. And yeah, I'm like, oh my god, I, it somehow eased me into it more. Okay. So she walks into the woods and you slowly hear, oh my God, and then all the tales of witches, I guess the, it's saying that witches are, are real, or at least in this world they are, or she becomes what everyone thinks a witch is in that time. Like people will now perceive her as a witch. Yeah, yeah. Um, and for whatever reason, the floaty stuff, while it didn't creep me out, it, did, it didn't make me go, oh, here we go. Because it wasn't trying to scare you. It was yeah, like just, it was just a thing happening. Yeah. And it was kind of telling you that she was part of, she was a witch now, I guess. She joined the coven of witches. But I think that could have worked just as well of like walking along and there being like just 10 hooded people in a circle and she just joins yeah, the I circle. Agree. Yeah, yeah. And I think. She just that, joins the witches doing some horrible ceremony, killing a baby or something, you know. Just mashing those babies. Mash that baby. Like, oh man, just love me a nothing, good baby yeah, mashing scene. Witches love nothing more than a mashed baby. Mash, baby. And yeah. then body rub. Oh God. So the end of Hereditary. The end of Hereditary, I would have just taken out the floaty bits. The floaty um, parts, because I liked I liked it ramping up. The I did enjoy the head soaring off. I did like the body floating into the thing because I thought that's really fucking creepy. Yeah. The wirefu mum, who now is all of a sudden like martial arts flying lady. Yeah. yeah. Just ugh. But that wasn't enough to 
take you out of the film? Were you like taken out of the intensity? I, I was definitely. It looked goofy. Yeah. Um, but the other stuff that was going on, I think like the kid was good. Like the running away, it felt like the tension stayed up, even okay. though. And I could get past Spider Man mm. chasing him around the house. Because to me, it was one of the m- most intense sort of horror films I'd seen. Because I saw it in the cinema, saw it with a crowd, mm. and it, it had just kept me going the entire way through to the point where I was like, oh my God, now it's really going to kick off. Yeah. And it's going to be similar to how it was before in that the horrible things that happened were genuinely horrible. Mm. And even the ghostly things that he sees, I can tell they're not, you know, they're ghosts, so it's fantasy, I guess. Yeah, yeah. But it still was creepy. And I think it's just me personally, that kind of horror doesn't scare me. Floating around. Yeah, because you know it's not real. And I guess, but then again, ghosts still scare me, and I don't think ghosts are real. I think it's weird. It's like The Exorcist didn't scare me when she was floating up on the bed. It's because earlier in the film she pees herself. Oh, right, okay. And it's like that kid at school that pees himself. You, You're not scared of her anymore. You know, they may become, you know, head of chess club. Right. <laughs> but you'll never be scared of their chess playing skills. I see, I cause, see. Because, you know, 12 years ago they peed themselves. Yeah, yeah. You always bring them back down to that. Bam. Yeah. That's exactly. Take that, yeah. Jimmy Martin. <laughs> you'll never beat me at chess. You peed yourself. <laughs> I remember. Don't you ever raise your voice in me. Tom, what is your film that you would change? So there was a movie that I watched, and I, on paper, it sounded perfect, but I did not, I did not love it. Okay. But I feel like it could be changed a bit, but it's more than just one little thing. There needs to be a few broad strokes that need to be made through the film to make it better. And this film was The Apostle. Thomas, your sister, she's gone. These people, they're blasphemers, a cult, a disease. Bring her home. Name, Thomas Richardson. I dream of a world in which each waking day we rise equal. This island, it's our paradise. We have an intruder on our land. We have to find him. Your eyes. They've seen things. Ah, okay. Yeah, I've seen that. And so uh, it's a film that is a island in off of Wales, and a cult is there. It's the 1900s. Someone's sister has been kidnapped and taken there, and they're trying to blackmail the people. They go there. Uh, the guy, the main character, he busts along. Shit goes down. It starts getting weird. There's like a the lady, a magic lady that lives on the island. Everyone fucking sawn off shotguns each other. So I love things with cults. I'm a big fan of that kind of thing. You're an aspiring um, cult leader yourself. An aspiring cult leader. Uh, we will have to doctor all of these films <laughs> yeah. of me talking about this when this takes off. Yeah. But yeah, I really like that sort of like that premise, you know, the, like belief systems yeah. and people, you know, tricking other people with a belief system, um, you know, for some kind of benefit. Mm. And generally it's quite a sinister thing. Yeah. And, you know, that there is some evil on this Island, or not even evil, like so. It's like there's sort of like a pagan, what I assume to be some kind of like pagan thing, like a godlike thing, like yeah. creature that lives there. That they, the people that went to the island, learnt to abuse it mm. and make themselves their own little piece of heaven. Yeah, it's the old thing of like you sacrifice something to a god and they'll give you a good harvest. Yeah, or whatever, bountiful you know, harvest. That, that and kind of thing. No more shall you poison our crop. I swear you shall starve, lest you give us pure harvest. That was all amazing. And early on you get to see them, 
the, the main character, he's first turned up to the island looking for his sister. And they're like, oh shit, have you filled up your jar of blood for the night? And he's like, what? Jar of blood? Mm-hmm. And they're like, yeah, fuck, you know, you've got to, got to do it. And he's like, okay, yeah. sure, I'll just steal someone else's blood. Yeah. And you're like, wait, why the fuck is everyone, like you see everyone kind of like slitting their wrist and yeah. filling up these jars and of like blood. And like calling and, their little daughter over to do it next. Yeah. You're like, come on, everyone has to do it. You're like, ooh. This is, this is exciting. I yeah. like me a good sort of mystery around yeah. this thing because at this stage you don't know if it's supernatural or not. Well, that moment where he has put his blood down. Then all of a sudden there's... <laughs> like a weird, weird creature Blood down lady. there. And you're like, okay, right. There, yeah. there is like shenanigans. Yeah. And then the movie kind of like, there isn't any moment that I super hated there's just like sort of plot points that bits that didn't really work for me or things that I'd have liked to be different like I kind of feel like the movie really missed out by you only have like three or four characters uh, in the story there's like the, the dude that leads the island yeah there's the, the guy going along to get his get his sister mm. there's like I don't know Second in command on the island and yeah. friend of leader and second in <laughs> yeah, command. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And oh, and the leader of the island's daughter, and there's like a boy who kind of like turns his friend, up. So, the, the friend, his son, right? Yeah. And all of these people are very like tight knit. Like, I kind of would have wanted there to be more shown about people on the island. Because mm. there's a moment where they are going to, they're going to execute someone. And they're like, boom, get out the execution thing. We're performing the execution. Yeah. And they've got this very fucked up execution table, which involves like clamping people in and drilling Vice, into like them. Like vicing them shut around yeah. their wrists or hands. But when the guy's like, okay, go and get the execution table. We cut to some other scene going on. It cuts back. There are people in these like ceremonial robes yeah. and they've got this table and it's like, I want to know how often do they use this? Because yeah. you only feel like they've been on this island for like a couple of years, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Did they just build this fucked up thing for that one time? Yeah. And they're like, oh, sweet, <laughs> finally we get the robes that we spent yeah. some money on and yeah. we've got the table that we built and it's, oh shit, glad it's not me on the- Well, we made it now, so you might as well use it. Horrible like, drill table. Yeah. Well, it was, it was, I thought it was looked used. Yeah, it exactly. Like, it looks it. old and yeah. fucked up. And they have to transport everything they're using to that island. Yeah. So pretty sure they transported Although, that to the island. Yeah, or is they... it made of stone or is it wood? No, I think it's like, a, it's like a wooden table. With a drill thing. attached to the top yeah. of it. Yeah. Yeah. How many people do they kill? Because um, it, was it was supposed to be quite peaceful before, wasn't it? Wasn't yeah, that the like idea? everyone's having a good time. Yeah. Um, but why, so why have they got the super killer execution yeah, table. Yeah. Like, do the people live in fear? Do they like being there? Are people too scared to leave the island? Yeah. Because, you know, one moment they're talking about like, you can't leave the island, like that's betrayal. And you're like, have people tried before? I want to know this stuff. It yeah. would flesh out and it'd make Well, it's that whole tone. thing of like, all these, all the great horror films that I like at least, are the ones about isolation, like The Witch, Hereditary, yeah. all about a small group of people who were taken out of normal society and left to tear each other apart. Yeah. And that's kind of the perfect sort of scenario for that, which is these people who are creating their own society, which is so intense and, you know, the power struggle between the leaders and all that sort of stuff and making yeah, yeah. people underneath them do things. You don't really get to know anyone of the villagers or anything. Exactly. Like, they're just in the background, like, always just, like, pushing, like, a wagon full yeah. of cabbages or something. And you're like... Yeah. Are you just fucking cabbage guy? Yeah. Do you have any opinions other than glad the wheels on my wheelbarrow <laughs> still work because yeah. I've got to wheel these cabbages all around camp for the next week? <laughs> I mean, what did you think of the um, the idea of having that weird blood drinking creature in the barn? So I I liked that there was like they found um, a magic old lady yeah. that if she drinks blood, the crops grow and the they were like, fuck, we can use this. But they end up, you know, a bit like, man is what to do, comes in and they, they kind of, they twist it and break it for their own needs. So they like imprison her and they're force feeding her blood and that has made the island prosperous. Mm. I loved that. Yeah. But 
Does everyone on the island know about her? Is this like a big secret? Because they've got like secret tunnels, but how do you explain to all the people about the blood and... Yeah. Um, I just want a bit more of that ironed out. Like I really like turning up. Okay, everything seems a bit wacky on this island. Oh my God, there's a fucking witch monster and she's got a wicker headed man uh, and a meat grinder mm. for turning people into kibbles. Yeah. This is fucking amazing. I love that. Yeah. That stuff was really cool, but I feel like you could have just done more with it. Like, because at one point she's under the floorboards, another point she appears in the sewers and that's like the worst bit, is yeah. naked and just spooks towards people. That's 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 the thing of seeing too much of it. Because like, was she there? Wasn't she yeah. there? It was creepy when she was emerging from the blood. Yeah, that was, was cool. Like, I, was, I was really quite creeped out by that. But as soon as it cut back to her, cut to him going like, oh God, trying to run away. Mm. Cut back to her and it's just an old woman slapping the walls. Going like, yeah, like chasing him through the, the blood bog. There was one part, it's right towards the end. Mm. I don't know, they've, they've killed or freed the old woman or by killing her, you free the old woman. Yeah, Honestly, I can't really remember. Right. And they're, they're escaping. They're, people are running to the boats because shit's got wacky in town and everything is on fire. Mm. And so everyone's like kind of fleeing to the boats and they're like, they start rowing away and then the side of the cliff explodes, a jet of blood flies out, mm. and there's like laughter and screaming. And they kind of like look up and they're like... Yeah. And you're yeah. like, what? Like, I feel like I, that would scare the shit out of me. Yeah. And superstitious people like that, and they just don't even, they barely notice. I think maybe they say like, again. Better, better row a little faster. Yeah, yeah. And you'd think that you'd be, that would scare the shit out of you. Yeah. But I liked that it ended with him becoming the next one that the grass grew over him again. Yeah, that's like growing into him. I wasn't sure if that was turning him into the next like wickerhead boy or if he's now gonna be uh, the god of the island. Yeah, I saw it as more that, that he would become the god of the island and the priest character, Yeah, he was like, in my head, I remember him being like excited to be like, oh, I've got a new, a new god that I can give my blood to. Yeah, or, you know, something. No. Something like that. But I like that. It felt like um, a sort of new folklore kind of story that I hadn't heard before and was kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. Like having the creature in the woods that you sacrifice stuff to and that makes everything better. But yeah. it's, there's a bit of malevolence there. It's a really cool premise. Mm. This weird cult on an island that are now merging together. Like it's got a sort of real, like Lovecraftian feel to yeah. it. Like um, it feels like the Shadow Over Innsmouth or something like that where times are hard, people end up, you know, dabbling with some ancient, ancient evil for mm. immediate benefit, but very soon yeah. it starts spiraling out of control. And that's a great setup. The movie looks really cool, although a lot of it was very dark. Very dark, very desaturated. Mm. Um, but had some really, really good, good things. I liked, you know, people had fucking sawn off shotguns. That, mm. that was good. There was some good shotgunning. The piking. <laughs> that guy that got super piked. So that was another thing where I was like, he, he's an assassin from the king. Yes. I want to know why these guys have like the king's assassin coming for you. Like, sure, they're have this like they're not paying taxes or whatever yeah, yeah yeah but would you not send like the army over they had like two sawn off shotguns maybe it was only even one yeah and five pikes yeah <laughs> i feel like you know 20 armed guys would five armed guys yeah like <laughs> would take that island over really quickly yeah apart from, unless like you know cabbage wheelbarrow guy for uh, really gets like in there ah they send those guys over, but it becomes like hot fuzz, where they all open their coats and they've got shotguns oh my God, or like yes. out, pull yes. pistols out of the bike, basket on the bikes and start firing. You know what? I'd love that. I'd... That's what we need. So, those are the movies of 2018 that we've spoken about. We, uh, we ate up an hour or so of our dungeon time. Yeah. Only years and years to go. <laughs> yeah, yeah maybe, uh, maybe they'll send someone else to join us. Maybe. Well, uh, hopefully you guys all enjoyed 
you've enjoyed yeah. this. Um, if you want to see some more stuff like this, let us know. If not, you know, that's fine. Uh, let us know that too. Um, and maybe uh, leave in the comments below what were your favourite, least favourite, and a film that you'd change. Engagement, I like it. Bam, SEO. Mm. Until next time, everybody. See, see ya.